Good afternoon. So hi, I am Captain Samantha Jurbin. I am an Army dietitian. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Samantha Vickers Jurbin, and I also have my small little RD page, um, Sam the RD. Uh, and I kind of wanted to talk to you guys about how I became a dietitian. So I'm kind of looking off because I wrote some notes on things that I wanted to talk about. Um, but I want to start from the beginning. So I came in to be a dietitian later in life. Um, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And I took this one nutrition class in college and I fell in love with it. Um, please feel free to ask questions or comments or whatever along the way. And I will try to make sure that I can um, answer them. So after this one small nutrition class, like I said, I fell in love and I was actually an accounting major and I changed my major to go into nutrition, much to the hubby's disappointment because he had to support me for a couple more years as I finished up my degree. But um, I did my degree at Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas, and I loved it. Um, I did a lot of volunteering during that time. We already had a kiddo, so he had to come along and do a lot of nutrition volunteering. One of those was with Best Food Fits, um, which was a grant program that um, kind of revamped local restaurant menus to provide healthier options to children. And we did a community education class for parents and kids um, within San Marcos that also taught them some healthier eating ideas and how they could revamp their menus. So after that, I graduated. My husband is Army. He was a reservist, and he was like, oh, he's like, you can make it in the medical field. Like, I promise you, you should apply. And one of our instructors at Texas State was a retired Army dietitian. And so I had talked to her a little bit about it, and I was convinced that I could do it. Um, so I applied for the internship. I was actually the alternate, and someone in front of me decided that they didn't want to do the internship, so I got selected. So I was super excited. Um, matching day was not very fun for me. I was very upset um, because I did not get selected. So anyway, long, long story. But so um, got selected for the internship, and it's the Military Baylor Graduate Program of Nutrition. So not only do you get an internship, Internship, but you also get your master's for the program. So I did the master's, we did the internship. I was in San Antonio, Texas at the time, and we wanted to stay there. Like I said, my husband was in the Army, he was a reservist, so we had a good support system there. Um, so I did both my master's and my internship at BAMSI or SAMSI, depending up um, depending on who you talk to. And so there is another question about um, Asthma, one of the other dietitians, I probably have met her. Um, I think I have had some interactions with her, but we are not on a close um, acquaintanceship, I guess. Um, but there's lots of dietitians. There's lots of military dietitians, uh, former and present. Um, it's a small field, so we do talk a lot to each other. So I finished my internship, I finished my master's. I decided to stay at BMZ because I like Texas, I'm from Texas, and we're pretty proud of being Texans. So we stayed there for a couple of years. I was in the outpatient clinic. I became the assistant chief of the outpatient clinic. I was a preceptor to interns um, while I was at the clinic. Um, prior to leaving to my next duty station, I became an inpatient dietitian which was interesting. It's very different from outpatient, but it was a good learning experience. Um, when we were talking about moving and new duty stations, um, I really liked teaching and I talked to our assignment officer who kind of helps you determine where you're going to go and they ultimately determine, hey, this is where we're going to place you. Um, I wanted to do something in teaching, which brought me to Fort Lee, Virginia. And so I currently teach nutrition education at the Joint Culinary Center of Excellence for um, all the services, um, I am the dietitian within the building at Fort Lee, Virginia. So it's much, much different than inpatient or outpatient. Um, it is academia, but it's not um, like college academia. It's a little bit different. So when you come into the Army, um, before you come into the Army, you kind of figure out like what job you're gonna do. And so we teach the culinary specialists or the cooks um, they come in first week they get us uh, for nutrition, for sanitation, 
And then they actually go on to their other culinary type training. So it's pretty interesting. You get a lot of different people. Um, for these culinary specialists, they can actually go on and become diet techs. So it's another additional training and their training is actually in San Antonio. So we do a little bit of mentoring with them as nutrition specialists um, or diet techs. And we also have um, an enlisted counterpart with us. Um, so he does some mentoring as well. So it's pretty interesting to kind of see like what we can do within the culinary field. A couple of weeks ago, we just had a culinary competition. So as the culinarians come through class, um, you know, they get educated, they get nutrition, they get sanitation, and then they learn the rest of their culinary skills, and then they can come back for more advanced training, and um, they can cook for generals, they can you know, do their own restaurant, do their own thing. Um, so it was a very advanced culinary training for our competition or training exercise, as we now call it. Um, so we have a part to play with that, to where we have a different section so they can um, prepare healthier items that are within the recommendations for macros as the USDA recommends. And so it's pretty interesting to kind of see what they do. Um, I'm just kind of looking over my notes to make sure I touch everything. So there are tons of different opportunities within the military, not just Army. Um, I know I'm giving you a lot of Army um, like information because that's what I'm in, but there are dietitians in the other services as well. Um, we used to have um, Air Force dietitians in our graduate program of nutrition, but now they are doing direct accessions, which means they come into the military as dietitians and they don't go through the internship in the master's program. The Army does that as well. We do accept direct accessions, um, but I did not come that way. I went into the Army to get my internship and my dietitian um, licensure so that I could um, be credentialed and be a dietitian. Since I've come in, I've taken my CSSD. Um, you get a lot of performance nutrition experience within the military um, because you see a lot of athletes. You talk to a lot of individuals who are training either for their physical fitness test or just their regular health and betterment of themselves. So lots and lots of performance nutrition interactions. We also work very closely with food program. So we are with in the culinary field at my location right now. And so within the dining facilities, what is what their food is dictated by is food programs. So we work a lot with them, making sure that the soldiers that we are feeding get a lot of healthy food, a lot of healthy options, um, so they can fuel their performance, fuel you know their activities too, and make sure that they're healthy. Trying to think. So I also, like I said, I was on um, Facebook. I also have uh, a Pinterest account. It's just my personal account. Um, it's probably under Samantha Jurban or Samantha Vickers Jurban. I post a lot of food. I like a lot of food. It's one of the reasons I became a dietitian. I love nutrition. And we, being at the Culinary Center, we've seen a lot, a lot of different dishes and how they prepare things, both for the dining facilities and then for more extravagant and more special events. And so we have a lot of access to different recipes and to see how they can change things, make them healthier, sometimes make them a little less healthy than what we would like. But it's a tough job, especially for the culinarians, because they want people to come back and see them. And then we just want everybody to eat healthy, right? We want them to perform well. We want them to get good foods and to fuel their bodies properly. So like I said, if anybody has any questions, please feel free um, to answer, ask, you know, comment, whatever. Um, like I told you guys, I like nutrition and I, I guess I always have, I've always been kind of curious, but I think it is such a growing field. Like the obesity and overweight epidemic that's kind of going on, you know, it can be controlled. We can change um, our, I guess our lifestyle through diet and exercise, right? And that's what we talk about a lot. We make these recommendations to our clients and I completely believe it and I think we can all get a little bit healthier. Um, so 
Another question came up, what is Officer Basic? So if you are enlisted, or if you know enlisted personnel, it is nothing like that, I promise you. So my husband is enlisted, he uh, was airborne, he, um, he has been an instructor, he's been an OR tech, an operating room technician, um, but he went in basic in the late 90s and it was tough. I don't think base or BOLIC, so we call it basic officer leadership course, is this tough. Um, we were there, went in middle of September, we had a week of pre-BOLIC, so we could kind of get accustomed to the Army, um, making sure we kind of knew what was going on like I remember sitting there and we're shaving berets to make sure they fit your head properly. So that was pretty interesting. Um, we would go out in the field. So there it's Camp Bullis. So it's in San Antonio and it's a field site. We would stay out there for a couple of days. We would do land navigation um, at night and during the day. So we could figure out how to get to different places, use a map in case you were lost somewhere you needed to find out where you were. Um, a lot of kind of coursework in classroom hours. We did learn how to put weapons together, clean weapons. Um, we learned about the other positions uh, within the military that were there, not only just the officer positions, but the enlisted positions as well. Um, we had physical therapists that, uh, well, they were just like me, they weren't dietitians yet. Um, but they were going to be in school to become physical therapists, so they were there with us. So we got to kind of see their background and um, different things that they had gone through. There were some enlisted personnel, so they went in as enlisted and then they converted uh, to be an officer. So they had a lot of information to provide us and kind of tell us, you know, well, this is the way the Army is. This is what you may expect. So a lot of varied backgrounds. Um, it is medical. When you come in to be a dietitian or if you're coming to the military, it's the medical center, right? So you're with other medical personnel. You're not going to be with infantrymen at Bullock. Um, you're not going to be doing a lot of some of the crazy stuff um, that you may have heard of. But it, it was tolerable. We got to come home every night. I lived in Austin, so it was about an hour away from San Antonio. So I was able to see my children every day, which was nice. That's one of the reasons I wanted to go Army versus Air Force, because Air Force's basic training was, I believe, in Alabama, but I wouldn't see my kids for six to eight weeks. So um, it was nice to be able to see them every day. Um, by the first week in December, we were done with the basic officer course, and then we got a break, and then we jumped right into our master's um, curriculum. And so we earned a master's, within a year. So the first or second week in December and then we finished um, I want to say September of the next year. So 30 plus hours in nine or ten months. It was kind of crazy. Um, I was ready to pull my hair out, but it was doable. Like you're dedicated, you're around other people who are very like-minded, who are they have the same common goal that you do. So we did um, working groups together, study groups to make sure that we were very prepared for our curriculum. So one other question, um, some different places that you can work as an Army dietitian. So the Army is currently changing. Um, the Defense Health Agency has kind of come in to make sure that we are streamlining our efforts between the different services. So you don't have an Army person doing one thing, the same as an Air Force person, the same as a Navy or a Marine person. So it's there to streamline. So traditionally, you were in one of three things. You were inpatient, you were outpatient, or you were food service. Now, because Defense Health Agency is coming in, it's kind of changing things up a little bit. It's also pushing a lot of our dietitians out into the field and doing more performance work. So the idea is that you're in the same building, you know, with the people within your unit and you're walking down the hall to get coffee or to get whatever. You see the dietitian and you're like, oh, hey, I heard about this cereal bar or this protein powder or whatever. What do you think about it? Can I eat it? Should I eat it? Is it going to help me? Or I found the supplement. What do you think about it? So it will allow us to have a little bit closer interaction to where the beneficiaries or the patients aren't having to call into the clinic and make an appointment and then waiting however long they need to before seeing a dietitian. And it's not just for, you know, sports related issues. It can kind of be anything like, oh, I'm constipated today. What do you think I should do? 
Um, that one came out this week, which is the only reason I say it. But it's allowing us to see more people um, on a daily basis, and you're not really charting all of those. Um, it's still kind of in the early ages, so we'll see kind of what that happens or what happens with that. But a lot of performance opportunities. Um, Army, we're all kind of athletes. We are all held to a standard um, physically, and so lots of information with that. There's still lots of food service opportunities, um, being over dining facilities, managing personnel within dining facilities, making recommendations to food program. So currently the dietitian that is at Army Food Program is a civilian, and I am the only military dietitian um, kind of within the same department, but I'm on the training side of things. So we do talk a lot about stuff, a lot, excuse me, we do talk about a lot of stuff together and different regulations and why um, the Army does what it does in feeding our personnel. Um, but that one's pretty interesting. They're currently working on rewriting some regulation. So uh, that determines what's allowed within food program, what we're allowing our soldiers to eat. So let's say, um, just say a burger company wanted to put their burger into the army food program. There's a process that they have to get it approved and we want to make sure that all the products that we get in are good for the soldier, right? We want them to fuel their performance and make sure they're getting good quality food since the army is providing them or this for them. We want, don't want to get some inferior products in there. So potentially um, work with that in food service and then a lot of management if um, a dietitian is in food service. So, and you work with people um, kind of either way. Now my position is very unique because it is a training position. Um, we are training our culinarians. There's a couple other positions within the Army at different sites. Uh, I'm in Virginia. We have different internship sites, so those need instructors to help the dietitians or the soon-to-be dietitians within the internship make sure that they get their skills down and that they are fully prepared to take the exam, which I feel that we were. We were fully prepared um, to take our RD exam. And then um, we'll probably still have some dietitians that work inpatient. Um, when I worked inpatient, it was before um, DHA or Defense Health Agency took over. So we did work with civilian counterparts. We worked um, with civilian diet techs. We worked with Air Force. Um, I don't think there were any Navy or Marines where we were uh, a couple of years ago. But you work together. You treat the patient. You make sure that they're getting what they need. You make sure like their lab values are okay. You make lots of recommendations for tube feedings, TPNs. Um, you work very closely with physicians and nurses to make sure that the patients are cared for and they are receiving adequate nutrition to help with their healing. So it's pretty important. Like they're there and especially when they're in the hospital, they may not be able to leave. And so you're helping them to make sure that they're getting the food and the nutrition that they need. And your recommendations are taken into consideration. We do have a very large impact within the hospital to make sure that our patients are taken care of. I briefly talked about um, the RD exam. I feel that we were adequately prepared. There's a big portion that is set aside for the internship for um, food service, for inpatient nutrition and for outpatient nutrition. And your preceptors, you know, they want you to succeed. Um, we did lots of study groups. We did a lot of like outpatient stuff to kind of help us uh, become better and become more proficient at what we were doing. And I do believe they have a 100% pass rate um, for the internship, but don't quote me on it. But I know it was for our year group, all of us that um, went through the internship and the master's program, we all passed our, our D exam. And I think almost all of us are still in. Um, we all really enjoyed it. It's, it's what you do, it's what you love. So I, th I think that's pretty awesome. Um, as things are changing a little bit, we'll kind of see the direction that dietitians play within the Army. There is, uh, there's been a big increase and dietitians are soon to be dietitians that are coming in. Uh, my year group had 10 Army to Air Force. And like I said, the Air Force isn't doing that anymore. But 
want to say they're now doing 15 um, soon to be RDs to come in through that program. So we're growing and we're growing fast. And then we're still getting direct sessions in for people who are already dietitians, but they want to kind of jump on board. So it's a good time to be an RD. So another question, um, performance nutrition and supplement use within the military. It is crazy. So every military post that I have been on, and I haven't been on a whole, whole lot, so um, keep that in mind, there is a GNC. And I don't think GNC is horrible, but I think a lot of our young soldiers and our young military personnel um, think that supplements are better and you guys know like we'd rather you eat your food right and if there is a deficiency if there is an insufficiency then yes supplements may be warranted sometimes but you can get it from your food so we have seen a lot of issues with military personnel consuming supplements um, some have been dangerous there are resources for military personnel to use to help other military personnel um, kind of figure out what's in their supplements Every time we give a briefing, every time we do like a health fair, we have supplement information because we know people are going to take them. I myself take a multivitamin um, because there are a few things lacking in my diet and my numbers just aren't where they need to be. So I take it to kind of bump up my iron. Um, it's what it is. But operation supplement safety is one that we talk about a lot and we share with military personnel and even beneficiaries to figure out like what's in their supplements. Do you really need the supplement? I had a patient um, question some supplements and what she wanted it for. It wasn't even, that wasn't its intended use. So we talked about it, we gave her some resources and she realized that that wasn't what she needed so she stopped taking it. Um, I don't know the exact numbers for how many negative side effects there are from supplement use, but there are quite a bit. Same thing with energy drinks. They are readily available anywhere. We have little shopettes or little convenience stores on posts that people can go in and purchase an energy drink. Um, there are, I'm on a couple of working groups that is discussing that and trying to, you know, figure out, you know, is there anything we can do? We do not provide them within the dining facility. Um, so soldiers or military personnel are having to go out and purchase them on their own money and on the economy. Um, but people are drinking them. You can educate and try to tell them some of the dangers and try to give them some healthier options like coffee, tea, just plain water um, to help them with their hydration status and maybe even a little pick me up before exercise. But sometimes people are going to drink what they want to drink and we are there to educate and Tell them some better options. The energy drink, I think, is one of the big ones because I see it so often. When I'm teaching classes, people are drinking them. Um, Pre-workouts are another big one that I've seen. And I'll usually refer um, our students, because um, I do not see patients where I'm at right now, but I will refer our students to the Natural Medicines Comprehensive Database. Um, which is another really good site. And if you have a military email address, you can get free access, which is nice. And you can put that supplement in or that energy drink and it will break it down by ingredient. Um, what that ingredient is for, what's it, what, it, excuse me, what it is intended for, if there are any health issues that have come from this product, um, does it interact with any other medications, and it also gives it a rating and it's based off of research. So it's not me telling someone, no, you really shouldn't take this. This isn't good for you or this is not going to help you reach your goals. Um, they can see it from another source, too. Like this is the research behind it. You may not want to take creatine powder if you're trying to lose weight because you may hold some excess water. Um, and it kind of goes through that, too. And sometimes I think having that resource puts an extra credibility to it and so they know that we're just not like no you don't need to consume this like there's a reason we're doing this evidence-based practice that's what we work off of um, and we want people to do the right thing for their body and for their self are there any other questions or comments we're hitting about 25 minutes so we have just a couple more um, I'm trying to think 
So another thing, so I have been to Fincy a couple of times. I went as a student, so the Food Nutrition Expo and Conference. Um, it was very enjoyable, very educational. You get to see um, how other dietitians interact. You get to hear about research studies and what they're doing, um, you know, for certain things. And so I've been as a student. I went right after my internship. Um, and then I recently went a couple of years ago because my job changed and I was more food service. And when I went the previous time, I was more focused on um, outpatient and performance. And that's what one, that's one of the reasons I think that the military prepares its dietitians very well, because a lot of the information that was presented, we had already studied and we had already learned about. Um, but it's a good opportunity to see others, work with others, see what they're doing, see how their practice is going. Um, the last time I went, it was a lot about sustainable agriculture and um, reducing hunger, especially you know in school age programs and stuff like that. Um, ketogenic diet was a big topic. The last time I went, we get in, or we get questions asked about the keto diet quite often. Um, some people are on it and they love it, and you know we kind of go back. We go back to the research, like here can be some of the negative side effects. Um, here's may, how it may hurt your performance. Here's how it may impact your vitamin and mineral status. And we try to steer people, you know, closer to evidence-based practice and things that can make them healthier and perform better. So quick more minute, if anyone has any other questions or comments, if not, I will go ahead and sign off and feel free um, to reach out to me on Facebook. It's Samantha Vickers Jervin. Um, I do have a Pinterest page, but it's lots and lots and lots of recipes. Um, some of them I've tried and they're not so great. So I delete those quite often. And then I also have like a Sam the RD Facebook page too, that I'll put some more nutrition related stuff on. Cause sometimes I think my family gets tired of me talking about fruits and vegetables and drinking more water. So I try to separate it so they don't get bombarded with all my nutrition information on my main Facebook page. So if nothing else, I hope you guys have a great day and feel free to reach out to us if you need anything else. Bye.